some stuff we have to fix today. There were some mistakes. So yeah, so I'm gonna we're gonna have to fix the H bridge so the H bridge doesn't have enough current. There's some stuff we have to do with the And then we should be fine to go maybe change the shape of the PCB. So Water showed me, or Kamikaze showed me last day, the data sheet said we should actually ground this. It was not a use, and we didn't actually do that. So I just want to go through the data sheet and make sure everything is still fine. Yeah, so the voltage is good. We have 3.3 .3 volts. Uh, low speed, no, that's, that's the best bit I have. Do they say how to, how we should route it? Because in a lot of the data sheets, tell you actually how to use it place the component on the PCB, uh, where the copper should be, you can see that. You can see, it says connect to ground it and use, and we did not do that. Plug in as well, connect to ground it and use. So let us do that, and then we'll also add the interrupt band. I'm not sure if we're going to use it, but it's always nice to have it connected. Hey, bam, bam. Puppy. Uh, so let's ground it. The data sheet. So guys, always look at the data sheet. You never know what you might miss. Especially the chip you haven't used before. So I've never used this chip before. So I should have done this. Come uh, on, guys, I love it now. Um, I'll see what it's actually meant for. I don't know what it's meant for. So, so it says here that I can either VDD or ground it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put resistors here. So that's 0 ohm. So if I want to pull it up, I can pull it up. If I want to pull it down, I can pull it up. Not what I could see. So this is for the ADO. So the ADO needs to be pulled up or pulled down. I'm not actually sure what the effect will be. So I'm going to put two resistors here that I can, when I get the board, I can decide. So if I want to pull it up, I populate it. If I pull, uh, pull it down, I'm, uh, I populate it. So this is just for me, because it can be both, I'm going to make sure I can do both. So then I'll just put a note here saying um, to not populate. <laughs> Kamikaze did like this last night, he calculated that these pull ups resistors mathematically and everything is quite impressive. I don't think it was necessary, but it was good practice. Uh, yeah, I can, but what I'm thinking about is actually to make um, headers here somewhere that I can actually use it as a development board as well. So let's say in the future I want to add another aspect to devices and I can just solder on. So let's make sure we can make use of most of our chips. Uh, yeah, so I can just <laughs> solder blob or you actually get uh, zero ohm resistors. I'm not a big fan of just soldering the blob up to power. I'll always have some resistance here. Um, yeah, so pull up I'll mostly I'll use a value, not just a block. So you guys can see this little piece here. You can just rotate it and then it disappears. Because uh, it wants that piece to be part of that piece. So, so. Okay, now we need to this H bridge. So the, the bridges aren't enough, the continuous amps, but in 600, 1 amp per channel. So yes, so a MOSFET is basically like just a switch, right? So depending on how I toggle this, depends on the if the switch goes on and off. That is basically what it is. So we feed on the this signal, and then yeah, and then it switches on, off, on, off, on, off. That's a diode, just for feedback, uh, but 
So you can see the ESP32 outputs M1, and that's a PWM signal. The switch is on and off, and make the uh, make the motors on and off. So it controls the speed of PWM. So and then this pull down resistor is basically that you have control state on your MOSFET. So when I don't have any signal here, I'll make sure that it's grounded. So this is a yeah, so this will a high edge will switch it on. And then it will be off at a zero. So one switches on, zero switches off. So here's another example. So what they also did, so there's the same also MOSFET, also the pull-down resistor, feedback dial, they just done it faster as we manner. So it's probably front left, front right, back left, back right. So again, your chip outputs a PWM signal. If you don't know what PWM signal is, just let me know. Be happy to use it. So it's going to direct to the battery. Yes, 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 yes. So the motors have to be around the battery. So you're actually grounding the motor, it seems. So your one side is going to BCC of the motor and the ground, and you're toggling the ground. That makes sense. This guys, it doesn't make sense, just shout. No, that's right, right? So if I send a white map, I switch this on and it, it gets pulled down. So it changes, it inverts it. So if you have a circuit that you want to invert the signals in the output, then it's for logic control, so logic gates. So let's say I want to invert from a 0 to a 1, then I'll use a P channel. If that makes sense. And that's more on the logic level. So if I put one here, I'm actually getting a zero on the output. So I pull this part low, which is zero, and then my pull on because it flows. Doesn't make sense. I think I'm going to be able to explain it. It's a horrible way of explaining it. Most of the time, we use N channels. Of, of MOSFETs as inverting your, uh, your logic. So this is all the libraries of my symbols. There's some library now, I'm going to make a new one, Symbol Library Editor. So let's see what we can do. Place. Create a symbol. Symbol Library, we're going to call the SI. SI230. So normally ICs have a designated reference as you, which is common practice. So whenever you see an IC on a schematic or something, you'll see a BAU. Like resistors are R, capacitors are C, inductors are L, things like that. It's um, not a power symbol. Then text position will see. So I'm not sure what it is, but let's see. Okay. So you can see the designator, you can see the name. Now we can just make a rectangle. And that's quite easy, now you just put the pin. And put it under the line. Then we can look at the data sheet. So pin one is my gate. Right. That's an input. So be careful with that dot. So the dot is where things are going to get connected. Hey Andrew, uh, yes, I was thinking about doing it after this and it's final because there's some changes we need to make. Um, so I'm going to get repo, I think it's only schematic now. But yes, I will definitely put it after this. 
I must be careful because I'm making so you make a component in a library. That's important. So we have to choose here is where I'm gonna make this library. So let's just make a new library called clone. Let's just Google it. So what I want to achieve now is I know how to make the boxes, but I want to have the same symbol as for in channel, like this one. Ah, can we just use this package? That's oh, a BS one thing to do. Can I copy? Ah, Andrew, you're amazing. I oh, said it's drawn. Uh, Chris, you're still there. I want to explain to you about um, when I want to tell you about that you can't control a motor directly from a uh, Raspberry Pi or from an ESP32. That's why we're using this MOSFET. So the ESP32 or Raspberry Pi, whatever controller, only controls the, the switching of the MOSFET. But the power is supplied by the battery. The power is not supplied by the chip itself. So a chip like this can only only do 20 milliamps, 40 milliamps, depending. Um, so this is why we use MOSFETs. So the MOSFETs only switching on, off, on, off, on, off. It doesn't supply power. It's like having a toggle switch and you're just switching on and off. Yeah, that makes sense. <coughs> 